Hello! Welcome to episode 137 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 15th of October. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today we have some knitting, we have a blast from the past, we have some cross stitch, we have a gadget. Now, <laughs> I am using the term gadget very loosely, so you'll see what I mean a bit later. I have a couple of confessions. And also I have a shop update today. I'm very excited to be introducing a new colourway and a new project bag as well as all the accessories. Um, so do stay tuned if you're interested in learning about that. And the shop update will be tomorrow the 16th of October at 7pm British Summer Time. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my hand dyed yarns, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles and also bag making supplies like fabrics and wadding etc. Um, so that's all done with. <laughs> So we have the Craft House Magic Gift Along 2020 going on and it's going on in the Ravelry group and also on Instagram. You can ha use the hashtag CHMGiftAlong2020 um, on Instagram as well as the Ravelry group because I just think it's a bit more accessible for people to have two means of joining in. I will be drawing for prizes um, through both of those means at the end of the Make Along and that will be at the end of December. I have decided because the yarns and the bag that I'm um, listing in the shop this Friday is all sort of autumnal themed that we should have an autumn knit along or not just knit along make along so I've decided to call it the autumn makes craft along 2020 and you can join on Ravelry or on Instagram as well so I do I am excited to see what you've been making as well but I have got some very sort of Halloweeny and autumnal things planned including some really gorgeous little pumpkins I have a couple of those already but I need some more <laughs> so do come and join in I am a little bit behind on the Ravelry group at the moment because I've been so busy with the mistletoe kits but I'm hoping to get them all completely out by next week so I'll be up to date hopefully by next week <laughs> I say this let's hope anyway um, with the Ravelry group and the comments on the YouTube videos as well so I'm, I've been a bit a bit rubbish sorry guys I will be getting round to looking at those messages I think I'm possibly about three weeks behind um, but I hope to catch up at the weekend so let's get on with the knitting shall we so first of all I have my slip stravaganza that's a mystery knit along by Stephen West and the clue for the next section comes out tomorrow so I'm hoping that most people have already seen this already so that it won't be a spoiler what I'll do is pop a time on the screen that tells you what time to skip to if you want to not have spoilers I will also leave a timestamp in the description bar below which you can click on and it'll get you straight there so you have no chance of having any spoilers. Actually before I show the shawl I shall show you the yarns I'm using so if you don't want spoilers you'll at least seen what yarns I'm picking up. So I have three yarns out of my stash and these are they. <laughs> Let's get these so that you can actually see the colours a bit better. Ta-da! So there's a purple and sort of grey mix and then a sort of a bluey green. There's some sort of teals and greens in there as well. And then this one on the left, or my left, your right, has got a mixture of both in there as well. I'm not very good at holding three up, so I shall go through them separately. I have a fondant fibre here. And this one is the Sentimental Journey colourway on the Austin base which is Superwash Merino, Cashmere and Nylon. I have this one here which is the Blue Skin Yarns and it's called Spanish Lullabies and it is in Superwash Merino, Cashmere and Nylon as well so that's pretty much the same base as the other one. And then thirdly I have a Lolo Did It yarn and this is called I Love Daryl. Um, and it's on the tensile and merino base, I think. 75% superwash merino, 15% nylon and 10% tensile. And they're all four ply yarns. 
so because I'd picked those out of my stash I didn't have two skeins of a solid yarn that sort of went with it as well so I dyed myself a couple of skeins up and I used my Living on a Prayer colourway which is a sort of dark grey tonal and this is on my cashmere merino and nylon base so they're all pretty much a similar base anyway for the shawl so I am now going to show you the shawl so a spoiler alert <laughs> and ta-da this is how I've got on with mine so section one was this sort of honeycomb section here it is pulling curling up a little bit so hopefully when that's blocked it'll look absolutely gorgeous um, but I love the shape of this so there's like a honeycomb shape formed by slip stitches and in the centre here you have some stripy sections mine aren't so defined because I've got quite speckly um, tonal all different coloured yarns so you can't see the stripes as much um, but some of them it's really really obvious and gorgeous as well just a different effect and then there was a section two already a, a, earlier than I expected and it's this little bit round the outside and it makes these really cool holes <laughs> I have not finished my section two yet I have quite a few more rows all the way around here to do um, apart from the bottom edge um, and I'm hoping to get that finished tonight so that I can be ready for the next clue on Friday very very exciting I'll show you the back of my work you can see all the ends <laughs> I did start off sewing my ends in as I go using the method which is similar to carrying your threads in colour work across the back to sew them in as I went but I think because it's a slightly it's because it's a shawl um, gauge rather than sort of a stock gauge I wasn't keen on sewing all the ends in like that so I stopped doing that and I'm going to sew them in afterwards so the first section here is main the main colour which is the living on a colourway in my own colourway and a mixture of these two yarns striped and then when you get to this section here it's a mixture of the main colourway which is the living on a prayer and a little bit of this other colourway which is the Lolo did it yarn so there's probably going to be a lot more of this in a little bit later I'm excited to see how that goes mine is quite small but I am quite a tight knitter so Hopefully it'll be big enough. I'm sure Stephen will do a massive version anyway that I can choose from <laughs> if mine is coming up a little bit smaller than it should be. So there we are. That's my slip stravaganza. So the second thing that I have on my needles is my Way Through the Woods mittens. Now, the second one is now cast on, which is not very much since last time, but I thought I'd show it to you anyway. So this is the curled up edge and the Latvian braid that's around the bottom of the mitten. So I've just done that bit. So you're basically doing a Latvian braid in the round and there are loads and loads of YouTube videos about doing Latvian braids in the round so it is easy to work out. So the pattern is called The Way Through the Woods by Erica Mount and I have already finished mitten number one so I shall quickly show you that. I have shown you this on the podcast before but um, just to sort of so you can compare how much I've done this time. I've done this little curly edge on the Latvian braid and I'm about to start on the colour work down there. So I think these are going to be lovely and warm so I cannot wait to finish these and I might even knit some for friends as well. Um, if they're into mittens I'll have to, I will have to check for Christmas <laughs> but these would make a lovely gift for Christmas but these are for me <laughs> so the yarns that I'm using are blacker yarns and I'm using two different bases so the white that I'm using is a Shetland base and the teal that I'm using is actually a Jacob and I think them together look lovely and it just reminds me of a snow scene with the um, background all in white I think that's gorgeous so can't wait to get those finished we are definitely getting cooler weather now hence the jumper today <laughs> I'm, I should mention what jumper this is actually so I made this this is out of the Tobin sweater pattern by Cashmereette and it's it's actually sewn with some Liberty print um, and it's in sweatshirt in material so it's a lovely soft fleecy fabric and it's very very comfy and cozy now it's getting a little bit cooler 
Right, I now have a blast from the past and I thought I would link it sort of in to mittens, the mittens theme. <laughs> And these are a pair of fingerless mitts I actually made, oh, must have been a couple of years ago now. But these are a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern um, by a lady called Erica Husa. I will write it on the screen so that you can actually understand what I'm saying because I've probably pronounced it completely incorrectly. I copied the lovely Ava from the charm of it um, where she actually switched the colours around and also had this in a more monochrome coloured way rather than the original had some um, coloured wings for the moths but I thought that her version was lovely so I blatantly just copied her <laughs> but this colour work is absolutely gorgeous I love it don't look how neat it is because I'm sure that there's neater colour works in the world but they're a lovely little knit and I think that these are a good starter pattern for a beginner colour work person because you haven't got to worry about sort of increases and decreases at the top because they're a fingerless mitten and it's a good practice to do a small piece for colour work to get those some um, the tension right at the back. I knitted these in some what's it called Knit Pick Stroll which is a merino yarn which isn't always the best for doing colour working but it's what I had so you just you just have a play with what you've got don't you but actually because it's in the merino it did stretch a bit so I did I used 2.5 millimetre needles which would have come out quite tight I think with standard wool but because this is merino it's stretched or superwash merino I should say it stretched a bit so they actually fitted in the end I tend to prefer my fingerless mitts a bit shorter as well so I've got a bit more um, movement for the fingers but um, that's what it looks like on I should put them both on shouldn't I <laughs> but I should knit another pair of these because they were such a fun knit um, and ideal for sort of sitting and typing on the computer with when it's a little bit chilly at home so that's my blast from the past so much fun though the little tiny little sections there's like a circular section on the back there's some moons on the bottom of the mitten and this is absolutely gorgeous pattern definitely going to knit these again perhaps i should do some for christmas this year and now it's time for cross stitch i do not feel as if i've done as much this week i think that i a couple of days i didn't actually do any stitching because i was so busy making bags for the mistletoe kits but i have done a little bit so i think on the last episode I'd done half of the gold work across the top here and I finished that off which seemed to take forever I think because I thought that they're not full cross stitches those gold bits in the middle of the leaves that it would go really really quickly but it still took me 20 minutes to do a set of two so that was that was four days and then I had two days where I didn't do any, so it was a bit naughty. But I have started a tiny little bit at the bottom. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it could be an apple of some sort. Let's have a look. This is what it's supposed to look like. And I've just started this little bit at the bottom there. I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be. Um, it could be sort of... A flower I'm not sure <laughs> but that's where I am and I'm getting there very slowly hoping to get a good proportion of that border done for next week and I just oh it's just coming together really nicely now I think this there's certain elements that are coming across quite autumnal which is perfect for right now I think this top bit's quite summery but um this this colour here just seems quite autumnal to me and these side bits as well. Just really enjoying stitching on that. Lately I've been playing around with using pin stitch to start and finish my stitching but um, so I've just started to really get into it. Before I was thinking oh gosh is that going to hold? <laughs> because I was just panicking in case that it sort of undone itself but I've been practicing my pin stitch and I've got a little bit better at that I think I think that it helps to keep the knit, the back neat as well um, I want to keep it not necessarily looking exactly like the front but just so that there isn't too many lumps so that um, when I mount it it's not going to sort of stick out and look a bit lumpy um, in the frame um, but it is enjoyable sort of trying to hone the techniques to try and improve my sort of cross stitch and I'm having fun doing that. 
So that's my cross stitch project and that actually segues into my gadget section which is blatantly not a proper gadget really but <laughs> it's a very loose term on this podcast gadget <laughs> so here is my gadget section so with my cross stitch like I said I've been doing some trying out of some of the proper techniques instead of just sort of winging it <laughs> like pin stitch for instance but then I've I was watching some podcasts about these techniques and they said about use in something like this and this is called thread heaven and it's supposed to sort of um, help your thread not stick together too much it says thread conditioner and protectant on the little box and it's it looks like a sort of gel stuff it's not too sticky at all literally you just run your thread across that little box and it makes your thread so that they don't sort of get knotted together as easily I think it is anyway and I'm enjoying using that so I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and I definitely feel like if you do get a knot which is less often I think that it slips out of the knot much easier um, than it did without using it so I, I will definitely be using that in the future as well to be honest I bought this ages ago <laughs> And it's been in my drawer because I thought, oh, that would be nice to use. Then I'd forgotten I'd got it. Um, and then because somebody mentioned it on one of these floss tube videos, I picked it up and I thought, oh, I've got some of that. I will have a go at it. Definitely worth using. And I will probably be using it more in my hand stitching as well because I get too excited and want to just stitch. And actually using some of this could save me time in the long run because you don't get stuck with those horrible knots. I hate knots absolutely detest <laughs> so definitely recommend this I can't remember where I actually picked this one up from but I will find it from a sort of UK seller so that you can get hold of some too if you want some so now I have my confession section these are some quite random things <laughs> I have um, basically some stencils from some people stencils I think they're called fashion templates really but they they could easily be called people stencils <laughs> oh dear anyway because <laughs> I'm interested in dressmaking I sometimes like to sketch um, ideas of what outfits could go together or modifications to patterns that actually might look nice on me so instead of having to draw out a person all the time I had seen on Liz So's podcast well not podcast it's like um dressmaking video she does that she had some of these and I just thought I need those I'm gonna get some <laughs> so I ordered some so in the set I got I got a sort of full person view and they've got little measurements on as well um if you look up close it's difficult to show you on camera because it is transparent i got one with the head and the arms missing you can see in the reflection a bit better um, and that's sort of joined by the feet and you can see measurements down the side of these um, one with a sort of rounded ruler on the base there with the arms and head missing and then separate top and bottom so I thought that was really fun um, to have a go with. I don't know if I'll use them all, but I thought I'd give them a try. So the ones that Liz linked to were from Amazon, but I found that on a website called Alibaba, they also sold them. So I got this set for about £10, and this is the smaller set. There is a larger one as well. Um, but on Amazon, they were something like £30. So I wasn't going to be paying £30 for something I wasn't sure whether I'd use that much. So I will leave a link to where I got these from Alibaba, but also from Amazon as well, if you're not into buying things from Alibaba. Alibaba is a bit like eBay which I've never actually used Adam ordered them for me they seem to arrive in a couple of weeks and he's ordered a few things off there and they've they've come relatively quickly and I think they're supposed to come all the way from China and different places so sometimes they can take a little bit longer so that's my first of my purchases <laughs> I have also purchased a new magnifying headset so this one I picked up from Amazon actually so the one I normally use has got a solid back that is, is made of plastic that goes all the way around your head and it screws tight around the back of your head and I think sometimes it can give me a little bit of a headache when I put it over my ponytail. 
So I thought this one has got like glasses or there is a, a little elastic but you can actually remove these side bits by pushing those bits in and that clips onto it instead. If I can actually do it on camera. So that clips onto it instead. So you can have the elastic or the sort of glasses frame. And it comes with several different magnifying lenses. This is the same magnification, I think. I haven't compared them directly to the one I had before, but I just wanted to see um, what they'd be like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare doing my cross stitch every day for 20 minutes with this one compared to my old one, which is a Rolson. And then I will give you a little sort of mini review in next week's podcast to see how I get on. So the Rolson one, I find, puts pressure on the front and the back of my head when you've actually adjusted it because it's quite a, it's not material around your head but I'm not sure whether this is going to put a bit too much pressure on my nose because this looks like it's where all the the weight is going to go on to but we shall see I shall test it out what I'll probably do as well is at the weekend have a longer cross stitch session and test it for longer than 20 minutes as well so it's going to be a scientific study <laughs> of the two of my magnifiers I did, I picked up from Amazon, but I will put a link in the description bar down below this week and I'll put a link to both of them um, next week as well so you can sort of have a look at prices and things. I only paid £9.99 for that one so that it, it's not it's very expensive and much easier than having a separate magnifier. I find it easier to have it attached to your head so you don't have to worry about sort of angling it in the right direction. It's always there in the right position to use all the time. So that's my purchases. <laughs> they're very useful things though. They're not naughty this time, I, I feel. <laughs> so last section is my shop update and I am so excited to show you my new colourway. So this is called I Put A Spell On You and it is purples and sort of dark grey and black and mustard and browns in there as well so it's quite a sort of muted um, version of sort of Halloween I suppose um, so that's based on the song I put a spell on you there are a number of versions that I really like so I will leave it up to you which one it is so it will be available as a sock set with this purple which I have called spellbound which I think works really well together and I decided actually to get, because I've got a number of colourways that are sort of Halloween or autumnal themed and put them together as a little mini set. So I've popped them all together and I think actually all of these go together quite well. So we have Black Hole Sun, which is the sort of tonal black colourway. We have Thriller, which is like a cherry red. We have Spellbound, which I've just shown you, which is the purple. And then, obviously, I put a spell on you in the smaller mini version. We have Pumpkin Patch and Pumpkin Vine. And then, last but not least, Garden of Shadows there as well. So I think that they're a nice sort of autumnal set um, that goes together nicely. So I'm going to be casting some of these on for my sort of autumnal knitting. That'll be for the Autumn Makes Craft Along that's starting right now over in the Ravelry group and on Instagram. So those are the minis. I'm also excited to show you the new project bag design that I've made. So this is Binks the Cat and I'm going to call it Moonstruck Cat. And it's a free motion applique cat and with little whiskers that have been stitched with free motion stitching. And then in the background I've got a moon and then I've stitched with silver thread um, little craters on there just to make a really cute little front and I picked this fabric up and I thought it was absolutely perfect for a sort of autumnal sky rather than having just boring black and then on the back I've done free motion stitching crafthousemagic.co.uk um, with a little cat there as well free motion stitched so this one is a drawstring one and they've all got um, large two large pockets inside it's difficult for me to show you there we go um two large pockets on the inside i've just popped um the yarns in there so, <laughs> so that it um packs it out a bit so you can see what it'll look like when it's full um they're box bottom 
and this one's drawstring like I said which will pull in like that um, but of course there is the option to have the zipped one as well which will look exactly the same size with just a zip across the top and then I'll use black zips for those so those will be in the shop the 16th of October at 7pm British summer time but I'll also be um, putting up some other little accessories all in the same theme so I'll have these little cat notions pouches so I like to have my notions pouches so they sort of sit nice and wide and open um, to put your little bits and bobs in there with the little cat um, progress keeper on the zip pull I didn't put the moon on this because I thought it would be a bit too busy but I've put the cats on all the other accessories so this is a circular needle case and you basically pop your circular needles in there and roll it up and then use the little elastic band to secure it with the button I will leave a link um, just up here so you can see how they work properly where I've done a little 10 second video to show you how to use them so that's for circular needles I have DPN cases with a cat on as well um, with a purple lining like the others so I've got some scissor cases as well um, with a cat on the back there so there's a whole set that you can choose from and I'm also doing some stitch markers as well so these you can choose between um, the small ring large ring or small or large lobster clasp as well as the lever back clasp and these three um, that I've designed to go with this kit are a star a moon um, and a little cat but I do do the cats um, a set of three of those as well if you're not keen on the star and the moon the double sided charms which are nice too so I have a bit of an update on some of the higher higher products that I've been stocking so I'm starting to stock some of the bamboo tips as well for the interchangeable cable sets um, and I've got most of the sizes for the four inch needles and some of the five inch needles as well so as and when they're updated on the higher higher website I'll get some more in so I'm stocking up on all the different types of needles if there's something that you'd like to see in the shop that you don't see in the shop I can pick those up from higher higher because it's literally just round the corner from me so I quite often pop over and get more stock for all different bits and bobs so do drop me an email on craftisemagic at gmail.com if you want to request anything from higher higher or whether you have got a question about the shop so I think that's all for today thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you next week bye <laughs>